So, Rachel introduced me to that song um, by Kelly Stoltz, uh, Prank Calls. And to be honest with you, it's one of the songs that um, um, really gets to me usually. It makes me um, think about her a lot because it's one of those songs I knew nothing about nothing about she introduced me to that song and that and it was like so many other things that we both thought was cool and we both agreed on um uh came from her um she was a big fan of dr dog and this is this is one point of pride for me um she had never heard of dr dog and when we were broken up during that awful short period of time, years and years and years ago, where we broke up and we were living together in the same house in Hadley, I found Dr. Dog on Spotify and I found this album. The, I don't even know, I don't think I, I remember the name of the album. Maybe it's that old Black Hole. That's, that's a song on the album. I don't, I don't remember the name because... I'm a fan of that album. She, her love for Dr. Dog expanded and she really got into them. So, um, but every song on that album is fantastic. And I remember listening to it. There was one song, Lonesome. And I think I found it because I was looking for songs about being lonely because we're broken up and living together. And I remember laying in bed on, we had this big long apartment with two bathrooms and there was um the apartment it had been added onto this big white house and we had the downstairs of this big white house with a farm in the back and um there was an add-on in the back and when we broke up she, I, her bedroom was in the front past the kitchen and mine was all the way in the back it's a big long apartment so the it was hell for me i hated the breakup and i just felt so distant from her there was and uh I found this song this Dr. Dog song and then I started playing the whole album and more than me being like oh this is so great I I knew that it would be like right up Rachel's alley perfect for Rachel so I sent her a text with the link to the album and it's funny because we weren't speaking at all. Like, uh, she wasn't really... Uh, there was times where I'd sleep outside her door. She'd shut her door at night. And I'd cry and, you know, wish that she would come to the door. And then I'd find out she didn't sleep there or something. But um, when I sent her that Dr. Dog text, it was kind of like a we were both letting go of the stuff we were angry about and um um it's hard to stay angry at someone that you're just such that's such a good friend that you it was so much more than just love for us um we just loved we were just loved each other's company so um in my last podcast I fell apart and I apologize um I apologize for that. Uh, I talked about when Rachel died, the day she died. Um, but uh, I needed to talk about that. I need to just get it off my chest, um, the details. And uh, I, I, I felt good afterwards. I felt a little, a little bit better. But... Um, there are some things about Rachel, her philosophy. Um, we shared the same philosophy about a lot of things. And one of them was our barometer for success. And we always thought this might have been a survival thing because we weren't very, I wasn't very successful professionally and we struggle with money a lot. So, but our barometer for success was, um, we thought that it, you could judge how successful you've been by walking into work or walking into a room and and taking note of how people what happens to people when you walk in a room do they smile are they happy to see you 
Um, you know, does everyone laugh? Does the mood change um, in a good way? And if so, then we thought that you've been successful um, just by bringing joy to people wherever you went. And um, Rachel was the most successful in that regard. I can still... I always felt like she was the glue in her family. Like, at family events, I always felt like she was the center of all the attention and center of all... Not even attention, but just like, you know, maybe waiting around with her family if she hasn't shown up yet and then she shows up and it's just like everyone lets loose and has a good time and I remember going to visit her at work a lot and sitting on a bar stool or something and be in a you know walk in and she wouldn't be there and they would say oh she's just stepped out for a minute she'll be right back in and um, watching her come around a corner and enter a room was just something magical like not only for me in my heart and seeing that little beautiful girl walk around a corner and just the way she walked and the the things she would say when she entered a room and she just brought so much light and uh but I would always notice other people um react to the way she when she entered a room and I remember thinking man the whole world is in love with Rachel so it's not just me and uh it always made me feel so damn lucky and good that I got to go home with this girl that the whole world was in love with um and uh that always just made me feel really good she uh, you know, we shared that barometer for success, but hers went a little deeper. Like, I remember telling her that that's how I felt about success, and hers went deeper than that. She always felt those things, yes, the way people uh, receive you is a good way to judge it. She's, but she also thought that success was being there for your friends when, at, at, when they needed you the most. Um, and being honest and sticking to your word if you say you're going to do something. Um, being, just being uh, your capacity for getting through shitty times for someone else, being there for someone else. And in that way, she changed me a lot. She just um, instilled those things in me and... Um, we really just felt like it was us against the world a lot of time a, a lot of the time and uh i uh, i think we shared uh we had we both dealt with our pain by lap by with com like comic relief we both just knew how to laugh even when times were real shitty or we were feeling like crap or um, unable to get out of bed, just things like that that most people would think um, would consider to be weak qualities or something. We always, you know, reveled in those in those um, qualities about ourselves. And um, there's some things about Rachel that I think nobody knew. She had a personality at work that. She put on a personality at work that was, yeah, that was a big part of who she was, but um, that personality, she, she never brought any of her vulnerabilities to work with her. So I think a lot of people f f saw this like kind of bold, tough, badass girl who um, wasn't phased by anything, very cool, cool as ice. But they never got to see that vulnerable side of her. And and I loved the vulnerable side of her. I loved, you know, and I got a lot of it because she would spend so much time with this uh, personality, this, um, in that character mode, which was genuine. It wasn't like a put on. It was a big part of who she was, but I got to get her get the side of her when she would come home and just like 
all of her stress and vulnerability would come out. And it was just like the most precious thing because you'd see this girl who you... I always looked up to her as just this incredibly strong, badass, bold, confident, get-it-done girl, person. And uh, seeing the other side, like the vulnerable side of her, her feeling like she needed me. Because she she put on this thing, this personality where she was just fiercely independent. Like she could, at any moment, be on her own and be fine. And um, she did that so well that she would make you, you know, I used to think that she didn't feel things. Like, before we fell in love, I would be like, this girl's incapable of feeling the mushy feelings that I feel. That's not true at all. She felt all those things. That's what makes her even more heroic because she felt all of those things. And when she was sick, and a lot of people who witnessed her being sick just said, man, look, she's just so strong. But they didn't even... Some of them didn't even realize how strong because she was scared. People wouldn't see her cry much and she didn't allow people to see her in a really tough, hard, uh, when she was struggling. She would, especially at the hospital, there was a big rule about you had to go through me, basically, um, uh, to get to Rachel. Even when I wanted, some people wanted to come see her and I almost wanted to force them to come into the room, Rachel would ultimately, I'd have to check with Rachel. And and a lot of times she would say no. She didn't want to see those people because she didn't want them to see her like that. And uh, so as heroic as a lot of people saw her, the depth of how heroic she was is only only a, a handful of people got to see that her family and, um, and myself and even some of the nurses really but um, uh, she was so bold and strong and faced everything with such uh, seemingly fearless and graceful uh, disposition but Watching, knowing that she felt that fear heavily and she felt all those insecurities and those worries and those, um, you know, she was very insecure in a lot of ways, but knowing that those things exist in still persisting and striving and overcoming those things, that's what's, that's the real heroic nature is uh being vulnerable and being susceptible to self-doubt and then overcoming that self-doubt and ultimately saying no no I'm not going to let this beat me and that was Rachel and that was Rachel oh man you know <clears throat> What can I say? She was just like, she was just such a beautiful force. Such a vulnerable, beautiful, wonderful force. And the way I describe her, and I, and I always will, is she lived a perfect life. She lived perfectly. She left nothing on the on the table. She gave everything she had to everything she did. Um, 